Hello, Michael here with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at the Pixar Facing Ratio node, which I know sounds unexciting, but um, is actually really useful for a lot of things. So I'm just going to quickly set up a scene here. I've just got a, a dome light set there, and we're just going to use a sphere. So to start off, we'll assign a Pixar surface shader to that, and we'll jump into the Hypershade editor. All right, so with the um, Pixar surface, we'll just name this ball so you know what I'm looking at. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, hit tab and type in PXR ramp and we'll get a PXR ramp and I'll just run that ramp into the diffuse color and then I'm just going to chuck three colors on this. Uh, we'll just go red and yellow and blue. All right, so now if I render this, you'll see that I get a ball and the ramp shader is applied to it based on the UV. So you can see that it's wrapping around the entire ball, which is fine. Uh, that's the, That would be the expected result in that case. However, we can make this slightly more interesting using the hypershade editor. If we add in a, a PXR facing ratio, and I'll show you what it does. So PXR facing ratio, I'll give you that. And basically, if I select that node and hit 3 to expand it, and then run the result F into the spline map, basically that's going to define whereabouts we're looking at the ramp when we render it. So, just as a quick look, so you can see here now that our ramp, which was the uh, which was the blue, yellow, and red, um, now no matter where we point the camera, so I rotate around it, it's going to retain that ramp at its current position facing the camera and that's because of the facing ratio node so in the attribute editor you can see the facing ratio node um, attributes and what's happening now is we've got the use case set to camera so that means that it's the normal is always going to be facing the camera which means that with that ramp for example uh, we're always going to see that blue at the center no matter which way we're facing whether we're on top or on bottom um, i can also invert this so now that the blue is on the outside and the red's at the center and finally, you've got the gamma slider. So this will actually um, start, in this case with the ramp, it will start to favor different points of the ramp. So you can see as I push it to the left, it's going more towards the red side of the ramp. If I look at that ramp, the red side's the left side, the blue side's the right side. So uh, with the facing ratio node, you know that when you go further to the right, it's sort of gonna push the, uh, the how it favors the color sort of more towards that side. So. The normal is one, so we'll just keep it at one for now. You can also set this to direction, and I'll turn off face forward. Uh, sorry, I just had to update that render. So um, with the direction set to one, uh, that means that on the uh, Y axis, it's gonna be facing up. So if I set that to negative one, it's gonna be facing down. So um, similarly, if we set the Z to one, it's gonna start to tilt it away. And then if I set it to negative one, it's gonna tilt it toward. So that's just relative to your uh, direction for your mesh. And again, you can invert it um, and face forward. It's gonna be slightly different because of direction. It's, it's, you can see that it's got, um, that's gonna face the Y in the positive and in the negative. And then similarly, if I just rotate it on the X using one or negative one, it'll do the same thing. So it's gonna face the Y minus um, the positive Y and the negative x and uh, the, it's going to be facing forward on both of those axes. All right, so I've just set that back to default. Um, and so this this is pretty straightforward. I've used this in a couple of things recently. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I've used this on the um, Alifly eye that I did recently. Um, but you can actually use this for a lot of other interesting things as well. This is just probably the easiest way to show it. I'll show one other example. So if we go back into the Hypershade Editor and we type in Fractal, we'll get a Pixar Fractal node. Um, and I'm actually gonna use this as a bump input. And I'm also gonna use it to control the facing ratio. So how this works is if I type in Pixar Bump, get a bump map, I'm gonna run the result RGB, uh, so the result F into the input bump and then expand that Pixar bump by hitting the three key and the result end is going to go into the bump normal. So if I run that IPR again, you'll see that we've got some bump mapping occurring on our sphere. Um, it's retaining the color facing direction, but the bump map is uh, rotating. So the, the bump map is, is actually using the uh, world normals, you could say. So it's not actually moving with the camera. 
but you'll see on the facing ratio we've got a bump input so we can use this bump input from so we can run the result n which is the bump normal out to the bump normal of the facing ratio so what this does now the fractal is going to control uh, the depth of the fractal is going to control the color as well as the as the bump so if we jump into our pixar ram um, you'll see that the yellow areas are or sorry actually the red areas are the the highest points it looks like it's hard to tell because i've got a um uh, because I've got a dome light or it's getting illuminated from all, all directions but say if I push this red a bit further in yeah so it looks like that um, red is is the, the topmost in this example so if I reversed this you'll see that now the red is the bottom so you can use this to actually color crevices in um, surfaces so if you were trying to make like a a rust or something like that for example you could use the facing ratio to with the, in, in combination with the bump map um, say so you had a um, red surface highest surface point so that'd be your your uh, your your rust on top of your metallic so you can make you know your metallic say like gray or something like that so now you've got sort of like this rust effect starting to happen obviously this needs a lot more work but um, with very little effort you can get you know quite a powerful shader happening and obviously the bump map's not quite right at the moment because it's um, clipping the surface normal so I probably just need to adjust the surface mix a touch yeah so you get something like that um, so yeah that's that's pretty much all there is to it though I, I thought this was like a, a a pretty it's a pretty straightforward node but it's actually used in a lot of things um, car paints another example you can use it to drive the uh, the reflections of the flakes in a car paint so if you're using something like a pearlescent car paint it can be quite useful in that example um, and many other things so uh, yeah this I just wanted to run this one down really quickly for you guys to have a look at so um, and yeah, like I said, I, I, I'll use it as the thumbnail for this probably, but I used it in the, the fly eyes um, on, that, uh, on that model I did recently. And that was just a simple color ramp uh, where the, the, the red was out to the outside and the yellow was to the uh, inside of the map. Um, I was basing it on this um, fly. Um, actually so I wanted it to have that facing ratio so the outside edges were always dark but the inside was a little bit lighter um, so that's it for this tutorial hopefully you found it very useful if you did make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube and if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of these tutorials for things like render man and other CD products every week uh, if you would like to stay up to date even further check out the Facebook page link in the description that's it for now though thank you very much for watching and happy rendering